Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Thursday, May 9th, 2 a.m. Mountain Time, 2019. You're looking at Sunspot AR 2740 and 2741 turning around the eastern limb, and it is looking jiggy. Currently, we're looking at a blow-up of Sunspot 2741, which is this particular region here with the huge white area. Now, why are we talking about it? Well, another major C flare kicking off from the sun goes X-ray flux showing us C6. Potentially, I'm saying that's C7. After a C9.9, now we're looking for the breakthrough to C to M1. The last M1.1 happened uh I believe it was October or November of 2017, two years ago, basically. And we're picking up back into that range with these two spots coming around the limb. And we're going to be checking on them and watching them closely as they face directly towards Earth. And they're very active. The magnetosphere wanes. The grid, the infrastructure is not ready. Keep it steady. Intense rain near Houston causes flooding and strand students at schools. Oh my, holy macaroni. It appears to be dab time. Let me see how, oh, let's look at this mug. started flooding in and it started getting higher and higher outside and they started locking us in and we've been in since about three o'clock uh, lockdown for the whole flooding. CNN at its best. Let's get on with the update flying high. Oh, that guy just murdered some people. Have you heard? About 60 students stranded at a Texas elementary school overnight amid heavy rain and flooding and people being shot. Holy sh... Holy... A downpour kept buses and parents off the roads in Cleveland, Texas and forced Southside elementary school students to keep inside, Cleveland Independent reported. In Cleveland, we have a lot of low-lying areas Hard said. Not only that, this kid apparently murdered someone earlier today while he was trying to shoot up many more people. And that's good news. Good news that uh, we have people that are willing to intervene in situations like that. Sugar landing flooding. This was quicker than Harvey. Hurricane Harvey. A man walks past a flooded car on Williams Trace Boulevard, Sugarland, Texas, Wednesday, May 8th. Take a look at that. People waded through thigh-high deep waters with self-made walking sticks. And cars were abandoned on medians in the middle of the streets in Colony Bend neighborhood Sugarloaf Wednesday morning. Cosmic ray flux to blame. Uh, the layman would say it's heavy rain. <laughs> That's insane. Global warming. Ow! Get! Did I... When the one in 100 year flood happens often, what should we call them? Well, we should call them frequent. Yes, because that's what's happening. That's what's happening, folks. Did you know that Monsanto sucks? The Mississippi River is rising again as torrential rains fall across much of the Midwest. It's the latest in a series of storms that have flooded major cities and small communities along the length of the Mississippi and Missouri rivers and off for more than a month. In some places, homes and businesses in what is known as the 100-year floodplain have been hit by multiple floods in a matter of weeks. Holy cheeks. One St. Louis suburb has now suffered three major floods since 2015, at least two of which were approximately one inch within the 100-year event. What, so what does that mean? 
does that mean that the 100 year flood event is a fraud? Or perhaps does that mean that you're living in a new modern eddy minimum? Do you think that that could possibly be the situation that is marinating? See, according to this graph here, you are here. The bottom of cycle 24, which brings us back to the centennial minimum. Same level. Yeah, I know. Tornadoes, damaging wind, deadly floods leave trail of destruction across South Central U.S. Holy mackerelly. Mississippi River flooding puts town underwater. Potent deadly thunderstorms unleash baseball-sized hail, flooding rainfall, and numerous tornadoes across western portions of Texas and Oklahoma Tuesday into Wednesday as severe conditions join the region for a second consecutive day. Those same weather elements will remain a threat for a large swath of the county through Thursday which will be a, your Lur's Day, Lou's Day, as explosive atmospheric conditions continue marching across the county, firing up powerful storms. We're going to get to the models in a moment. If the computer sticks with us, we're in a new situation here where we have live... I'm down here. I'm, I'm opposite of where I'm going. And Monsanto continues to suck. Look at this guy, risk of severe weather in central Alabama on Thursday. That's after I'm speaking. The Storm Prediction Center has a marginal risk of severe weather over most of central Alabama. And he's well-dressed for the situation. Be sure you have multiple ways of receiving severe weather alerts going into your tomorrow. Marginal risk of one inch on a scale of one to five, with one being the worst. That's it? One to five in Alabama. Nothing to report there, apparently. What the are they talking about? Let's check out these GFS models of total snowfall. And let's just move them through. The next couple of days are looking for heavy snow. Look at that. Say it ain't soda, Minnesota. But more importantly, where I live in Colorado, we're going to get buried. Colorado, northern New Mex, getting buried on the GFS models. Some heavy snow falling in the south central Sierras. Holy cannoli. I love that kind of cheese too. It's sweet. It's delicious. Look at these totals. They're not schmodels. It's four feet or more exactly where I am. <laughs> and that's tonight's first bullseye on the GFS model, which is mathematical, by the way. It's not real, but... We need to take heed when we're looking at total precipitated moisture and we get to the uh, mid-May region and we show heavy moisture in the Oroville Dam region. Let's pause it. Yeah, that's like five or six inches in these areas, which could heavily melt off, not to mention the flooding in the Mississippi Valley. Holy schmally. We're right now at 88.778 feet at Oroville. That's... 12 feet from over the rim. Him, him. The rim. The rim of the dam. I mean, I like a good rim job, if you ask me. But not when it comes to Oroville Dam. Here we are at the data. Inflows have been increasing. There was a slight downtick, and now it's going back up from 10,000 to 12, 11 plus outflows. So the dam is going to continue to increase towards that deadly 900-foot mark. And with heavy rains predicted, we're going to watch it. It's like a soap opera. It's called the Oroville Apocalypse now. Multi-day heavy rain and flooding threat continues across parts of the lower Mississippi Valley. Well... Several rounds of thunderstorms will produce heavy rainfall from southeastern Texas into Arkansas. That's Arkansas if you live there. And Louisiana through early this weekend, additional rainfalls of 5 to 10 inches will lead to people sharding their pants in a really moist and black mold condition. Renewed threats of flash flooding in some areas to the west. Heavy snows will continue across the central and southern Rockies, which are not 
Schmackies, that's where we live. Purple and pink is your stink pink as far as winter storm warnings and watches through central Wyoming south all the way to New Mexico. Heavy rain and flooding. Eastern Texas, all of Arkansas, northern Louisiana, and then we're talking the Mississippi air region here. Already bulging to the north, flowing to the south, where it's going to be fed by five to ten more inches of rain. It's insane. Winter storm watches and warnings up in Minnesota. Northern Wisconsin, heads up. I know, I know. It's almost it's almost summer and it's a bummer and I just lost a joint. Holy shit. Let's get that. Okay, recovery. Good recovery. Where are we? Are we on there? <laughs> Let's just go with the trifecta tonight. It's just a triple, triple dipple of, of regions. Okay. We're back at you. Let's get with it. We got lots of tabs to cover. 11, 12 in. Earthquake rattles Farragut area. An earthquake rattle West Knox County. And that is in the New Madrid zone, 1.31 p.m. today. The 2.6 magnitude quake considered minor. Monsanto sucks. Had an epicenter about 4.3 miles west of Farragut, according to the USGS, which is a downgrade service. So at a low grade like that, whoosh, anyone's guess. Seismic update, no quakes of note, except the Farragut boom boom in the new Madrid zone. There it is. Let's see what they're reporting now. 2.6, seven kilometers west, northwest of Farragut, Tennessee. We got quite a big rumbler, 5.8 in Peru. Significant quakes, 5.0 in Vanuatu. Papua New Guinea, that's no skinny. And a multiplicity of quakes south of Kabuk. Getting as high as the high four mag. Nothing significant. Hey, have you heard Lecon's coming soon? Geologists suggest Horseshoe Abyssal Plain may be the start of a subduction zone. This is technical, kids. A team of geologists led by Juan Duarte gave a presentation at this last past month's European Geoscience Union meeting at included a suggestion that the Horseshoe Abyssal Plain may represent the start of a new subduction zone. Well, we've been reporting on shit like this for... Anyway. Yeah. Wow, amazing. How about those plate boundaries that go up north through like Alaska and Camp Chocta that they're not even on the map? Hello. Hello. Halo. This is the Kajiki Times, rest of Asia. Volcano erupts in Indonesia, releasing massive smoke and ash. Someone was puffing and passing. Holy. The volcano roared back to life in 2010 for the first time in 400 years. Hmm. I wonder if cosmic rays have something to do with that cycle. An Indonesian volcano erupted Tuesday, sending a massive column of ash 2,000 meters into the air, coating local villages. And now we're talking about Sinabum. Now that's only 6,500 feet. You know what happened today? Do you know? Do you have any idea? Are you serious? Reventador, Fuego, Shivalush, and Sabankaya booming. Take a look at this. Shivalush to 15,000 feet and Sabankaya to an amazing 28,000 feet today. Hey, hey. And that's your Puff Puff Pass update. And that's your son at solar minimum and not even playing well there it is sparkling like charcoaling oh my god that's about to face earth now these regions are about to face us are you listening holy shit it's not even loading I'm trying to load this this is for effect exclusively to freak you the out that this is about to turn towards Earth and maybe boom right in our face. We'll watch it for you. Sunspot 2741. 
following Sunspot 2740, which is getting kind of sporty. Just one hour and 36 minutes before I bloviate. Let's refresh it. Let's make sure no major boom booms have occurred. Okay. These are all coming our way. And as the sun started to tick off, the sun was shutting down at the solar minimum. But here we see a quick uptick in density now above the 10 range. Speed is bringing up and we are in a fire angle region which would lead to major vo uh, earthquakes. While I'm talking, I hope not a big one's going off. So we are now in earthquake warning. Look at the BZ going boom. Whew. Holy sh. Seismic warning. If I have ever warn of a earthquake, it's now. NASA accidentally destroys New York City in an attempt to save Denver. Whew. Well, thank God it wasn't Denver and it was a simulation. Links will be below. Have you heard? We talked about this. Holy sh. It's like we keep going over and over the same shit. Couple dies of bubonic plague after eating raw marmot meat in Mongolia. Ew! Couple things wrong with this. Bubonic plague and raw marmot meat. Well, let's add Mongolia. And let's all smoke Ebolia. Ulan Bakhtar, Mongolia, a Mongolian couple, has died of the bubonic plague after eating raw marmot kidney. <coughs> Triggering a quarantine that left tourists stranded in a remote region for days, officials said Monday. The ethnic Kazakh couple died May 1st in Nagmotsum after they deserved it after eating raw kidney from a bubonic plagued raw marmot <coughs> in the region. <coughs> that was role playing, by the way. That's the, a dust and gas cavity in the disc around CQ Tao revealed by Alma. Now, many of you might have <laughs> no idea what I'm talking about. But the multiplicity of scientists that put their name on this rag do. M. Guilea Ubirel Gabalinini, Anamoto Nolelo, Stefano Facini, Enrico Dacusa, Giuseppe Lotaro, Linaro Testi. Hopefully, he has both of them. Miriam Bensidi, Simon Brudo, and so on and so forth, because I'm really getting sick of this. Anyway, this paper is coming out in the last few hours and I just want to bring you to this picture here to the black hole we just were shown days ago do you remember this black hole at the center of our universe yeah we made fun of it he, Homer Simpson was eating his donut and now they want to show us this picture which is not a black hole. <coughs> it's insane. This picture is actually the rings, the star. It's a dust and gas cavity in the disk around CQ Tau. So this is a dust and gas cavity here. <coughs> dust and gas cavity around CQ Tau. And then a week ago, we had a, a black hole here. First ever. First ever black hole in a woman picture. It was a picture. It was amazing. And that's science, man. That's, that's where you're at. That's where you're at with science. Hey, have you heard that LeakCon's coming up? And we're going to point out the insanity of the non-science that you're being reported on. New analysis debunks controversial claim about the origin of humanity. Yeah, I bet you you were taught that we all came from Australian Pithecus and blah, 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 which looks like that. And this is what we look more like. That's not even, that's like an, 
gorilla and a human and like yeah there's a missing link yeah we found a missing link and that's where we came from and everyone in the world that goes to their anthropology class and so on and so forth and learns about hominid evolution is filled with pollution the pollution is mainstream media it's mainstream science it's the universities you're being taught at where the papers get peer-reviewed and you get to learn the bullshit that they're throwing down well the facts are in kids and there is no missing link there is no evolutionary ladder of humanity people that were homo sapiens sapiens just like you and i have been around for over three million years and the rest of the species are hominid like and they're not us and we didn't come from them and if you want to know about the facts about evolution it's not going to come from gizmodo it's going to come from leecon 2019 and i'm showing you the proof of the program that i just finished the other night and these are the talks. Guess who speaks first? I do. And Rex. Same time. Two different rooms. I'm in Pike's Peak and he's in Conifer. Rex is talking ISIS rising. Where he's going to basically recapitulate all of ancient esoteric knowledge in one hour. That sounds sick. I'm going to talk about cosmic catastrophe from cos comets to cosmic rays. Everything. And the misinformation that everyone is bloviating about. Blah, blah, blah. Look, it's, it comes from every angle. No one has the answer. And no one will, even after they get done leak on. You'll just have more questions. That means you're learning. David Dubai, Greg Allison, Christian Westbrook. How about the John D'Souza VIP workshop? I don't even know what's going to happen in there, except I have the PDF, Laird Scranton's Secret Dogon Esoteric Tradition and the History to Dismiss It twice in one weekend. Adrian D'Amico, have we ever been alone? Twice in one weekend. Gary Long, magical numbers hidden right in your in face. It's a disgrace. Are you coming to the VIP dinner in the atrium Saturday night? I know. You should be there because it cost us $11,000. Yes. It did. Thank you, Hemp Lucid. Thank you, Diamond, for making this program that may not even be available at the event because they can't even print it till the 16th. But Robert Felix is going to say, forget Darwin. Magnetic reversals cause evolution. And that's proof. Because I made the flyer. Denver becomes the first city to decriminalize hallucinogenic mushrooms. And Diamond was one of the first people to eat them live on air and get demonetized. Figure that one out. Yeah, that's like... That's like, oh my God, I hope I'm going to Leacon because that's in Denver, right? That means we can all eat mushrooms. Denver has approved the city ordinance to decriminalize hallucinogenic mushrooms. The city's elections division said. Now this is a slight, it's a tippy touch margin. Holy shit. 50.5% of voters supported the ordinance while only 49.4% were against it. Which means that it's not the federal government and it passed. Because they would need a way bigger margin to do anything. Now, the results will not become official until May 16th. But, until then. What, isn't that LeakCon? Holy shit. Did we do this? Oh my god. The city is set to establish a policy review panel to assess and report the effects of the ordinance per initiatives review. Now, <clears throat> did you know that magic mushrooms have been popular for recreational use? Actually, for thousands of years. Almost, for, it, yeah, forever since we have history. And even a growing body of medical research shows that psilocybin can treat conditions like anxiety and depression. In fact, in cases where drugs currently on the market cannot 
That's because drugs on the market are from the pharmaceutical um, cabal. And they, they're not here to help you. They're here to medicate you for money. But as recently as 2017, a study published in Journal of Nature shows that 47% of patients experiencing treatment-resistant depression showed positive responses at five weeks after receiving magic mushrooms. <laughs> and now Denver has led the nation in changing drug policy, and it's also going to change the nation in changing thought policy. Because LeakCon 2019 is going to explode on Denver, May 17th. Conspiracy theory becomes reality. Exposing the lies will happen before your very lives if you are privy to the conference. Because it's boom time. Live stream is available and the countdown has begun. Many people are asking me stupid questions. And in order to buy the live stream, you go below any video that we've ever made at Magnetic Reversal News or Oppenheimer Ranch Project. And it's right down there below there. If you think that you're going to actually be able to watch the live stream without understanding how to buy it, that's probably not going to happen. Eight days, 16 hours, 22 minutes, and 15 seconds. And we'll be at the meet and greet. Will you be there? If you didn't buy a ticket, you won't. But you can get a ticket to the live stream. And when we figure out how to actually use it, you will be the only person that has access to all of the talks forever. We're never going to make them public. So get the live stream for LeakCon. Now, I have some more information that I want to share with you, but I'm running out of time. I got to go to bed. I am so deep into this conference and trying to finish my homestead and trying to help other people. That's what I do every day. It takes me like 20 hours a day to do this, and I barely have time to sleep. I've only recently started showering regularly. Can you believe that? That sounds insane, but it's the truth. The truth is also here at the Grand Solar Minimum's Crazy Canuck on YouTube. We need to get him to 2,000 subscribers because he is sharing the practical knowledge and information that I don't have time to film, including a no-nail carry tray which I have no idea what that means, but I already thumbs it up. And you should thumbs it up and subscribe to his channel because I'm going to leave you links below and I'm asking you politely to do it. Now, not only that, in this video, he talks about so, he's, the Grand Solar Minimum's crazy Canuck, Brett Stumpf, is experimenting with thermal mass in these buckets. It's beginning below freezing as we get towards summer up in Alberta and things are dying same stuff's happening out here it happens you know every transition we have a small growing window so he's experimenting with thermal mass using spackle buckets filled with water what i've done is i've had bedding plants out here of course i've been taking them in and out because i just uh, want to see if this is going to work i put pails of water to basically catch the geothermal energy, or not really geothermal, but more like solar. And uh, <clears throat> so far, even when it was uh, five degrees Celsius below zero, the water in here didn't freeze. So in theory, this would work. You just cover everything up and the, the heat would stay in. Now to add to that, I also have some aquarium heaters. And of course this one's a pretty big one. So. A lot going on over there at the Crazy Canuck. Preparewiththeranch.com. Preparewiththeranch.com. Have I 
told you that if you go to preparewiththeranch.com, you're going to get some of the best deals at My Patriot Supply, including emergency food, water filtration, air purification, heirloom seeds for less than a dollar, and survival essentials. Free shipping, orders over 99 bucks. Preparewiththeranch.com. LeakCon 2019, Denver, Colorado. Exposing the lies. Monsanto sucks. <coughs> May 17th through the 19th, reception, 17th, Friday night. We're going to be pimping in some room. And and I'm going to have this right here. I'm going to have this. I'm going to be like, John D'Souza. Yeah, the real X-Man. Laird Scranton, Dogon, uncovered. Rex Bear just shaved his head. And so on and so forth. So, if you can't join us there because you didn't, buy tickets get the live stream link below every video i've made for the last five months get the live stream and you'll have exclusive access exclusive access to all the videos do it now do a dab Hope you got something out of the video. Times are changing. David Dubine is flying from Singapore to Denver this week. And Diamond and Rex are driving and dabbing. We love each and every one of you. If you want to meet us, you've already bought tickets. The countdown has begun. Less than nine days now until we have to figure out how to actually live stream this. We love you. Be safe. One love. <laughs>